right now? No? Okay. Alum? Alum? Okay. And uh, working around Chicago. Anybody know, know what observables are yet? Yeah? And then and I, I want to ask this question of everyone. Like, what do you come to this talk uh, hoping to learn? I and mean, based on the title, I'm trying to think, like, what does this title make you think you're going to get? And I'll try to make sure that you're not sorely disappointed. Anyone? Yeah. Real time, like, web socket type stuff. Uh-huh. Real time web sockets. Yeah. I, I, that's one of my specialties. I think it's like making the most out of the time available. And so I'll, I'll kind of do that. But it doesn't, it, this one isn't going to be WebSocket apps particularly, but it'll be that feel of like streaming and stuff. Did you have one? Well, every time I try to learn Rx, I like learning websites for the examples. And it's always like we're going to implement like a quick handler type of deal. And I'm like, well, what's wrong with the existing quick handler? So I'm trying to, and I, I feel like I, Rx definitely is useful for something, but for me, it's, I'm like, well, what is this actually used for like in the real world? OK. <laughs> yes. I'm going to be like directing all my thoughts to you because I yes RxJS I think it's very useful but it can be very like hard to get started and so I I've written a wrapper library uh, that I think makes it a little bit easier um, but first uh, to loosen me up and you all up a little ukulele tune and to check the sound that because we will need sound for this demo so Okay, that, that's all right, right? Like, you can kind of hear, it'll, it'll be, I'll be playing it live. Uh, you gotta share your screen with your Am I sharing the screen? I, yeah, I click this button. Okay, first. new share. Oh, is it good? Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> all right, then on this, yeah, it's, it's the, uh, the monitors that I'm on. All right. Ah, oh, that's my daughter there. Uh, let's get the QuickTime video back. And this is a little ditty uh, called, um, has anybody seen this code? And, uh, been writing code for at least a year, you'll know that we'll, we'll all see some terrible code in our lives, but the worst is the stuff you wrote like a year ago yourself. So has anybody seen this code? I take off the watch. Hold on before the there you go. Variables named randomly, far too much complexity. Has anybody seen this code? Functions long, all impure, steaming pile of horse manure. Has anybody seen this code? If you should get the urge to write code like this, wronger than sin, don't be a fool, go back to school and learn some discipline. Well, it's leaking scope constantly. It's not so S-O-L-I-D. Has anybody seen this code? Segmentation faults. La 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 la, no method error. Da, 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 da. Four oh four not found. La 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 la, cannot eject. If you should get the urge to write code like this, wronger than sin. Don't be a fool, go back to school and learn some. Discipline, well, I check the blame. I see my name. Oh shit, well, it's all the same. Has anybody seen this code? No reference exception. La 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 la, la blue screen of death. La 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 la, certificate not trusted. PC low letter, what does it mean? It's leaking scope constantly. It's not so S O L I D. Has anybody seen this code? Functions long, all impure, steaming pile of horse manure. Has anybody seen it? 
I hope nobody's seen it. Has anybody seen my coat? Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> there we go. All right. That's an old sweater handle. Woo. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that's my mom. And you saw there's a, there's a serious side to this. I think, I think everyone should help uh, uh, others uh, learn to code and, and have that uh, pleasure themselves. <laughs> uh, so thank you very much for that. Where? There it is. And here we go. Oh, wow. I'm like, I know where the rehearse button is, but where is the play button? Okay, all right. Is this doing, we got a mirror display thing. Just give me a second and deck set will do the right thing. Uh, let's see, uh, presentation, view, play slide. I'm not sure what Zoom is recording actually now. What's that? With, with the, uh, my screen, the presenter notes and all that? Yeah. <laughs> Who needs presenter notes? That's weak sauce. Do it live. All right. So we're going to mirror the monitors. Uh, mirror, built-in retina display. All right, cool. So this is going to be totally like, who knows what the next slide's going to be. That's cool. There's a lot of live coding, though. <clears throat> so... Where is this coming from? Oops, on my way over. Okay. All right. So let's see. I'm going to start a timer for myself too. <clears throat> Again, I, I know you have many choices of places to be on a night like tonight. So thank you for coming out. I I will not waste your time. I believe in wasting as little time as possible. So with that. Uh, let's get going. Uh, this is a talk that I have, gosh, been creating in various forms for a long time called Orchestrating Async with Observables. Okay, raise your hand. Do you write JavaScript? Okay, put your hand down if you don't write async in JavaScript. Ah, see, now all the hands go back up because we all write async in JavaScript. But it can be hard. It can be tricky. There's a lot of concepts. And... Uh, I obviously have this kind of musical way of thinking of things, and I found a way of doing async and JavaScript that I find to be very musical, and so that's why I like it, and that's why I'm sharing it. It's certainly good for all my personal projects. I'm not using it in production yet, but it's, a, I think, a good way of thinking about it, and I am selling the teams I work on on some of these ideas because this type of stuff is just all too common. I mean, hey, I write stuff that does this too, and if the people that work at phone companies can't figure out how to solve async uh, and, you know, with these out-of-order messages and stuff, well, then I don't feel so bad that I can't. But that's not the only kind of async problem we have. We have thinking things worked when they didn't. And we have uh, the, the where's Wednesday problem. This was a thing I was supposed to submit my timesheet application in. And I'm like, uh, incremental loading... Wednesday? Where, where are you? Like, so why, why, why does async take so much to get right? Um, I'm Dean Radcliffe. I have a musical take on uh, stuff because of, and I love coding too. So this is actually at a Windy City Rails and that's at a, a, a conference, a coding conference where I got to play drums with a bunch of coders. So like, I think about things in a certain way and finally I think they're coming together. So I just want to share that uh, with you. I work at G2. It is the world's best software review platform. And I mean that with all my heart. And we are hiring, and I'm a senior engineer on that team, so you know, talk to me afterwards for a little bit about that. Um, this is not technology that is immediately being used there, but I think this way of thinking has applications everywhere. So uh, yeah, so I, I think in the musical domain, a lot of these, we have these like async problems in computers. But the musical domain is all about timing and relative timing. When the, this cue happens, this other section goes. 
And so I think it's kind of been figured out to some extent. At least it works really well for that industry. And the CSO doesn't have the kind of snafus that, that we saw earlier. So they must be doing something right. So I'm going to borrow ideas from the, the music domain and give this talk uh, over a couple of different steps. Welcome. Uh, first, a little lightning talk of like what are observables. I don't want to bore you. I have live code to get into, and I think that's where you'll really understand it. Uh, but I made some pretty pictures, and so I'll show you some pictures. So lightning talk, what are observables? I'll show you one of those simple contrived demos that, that presenters use uh, that you're like, well, when would I ever do this in the real world? But I'll show that you to get started, and then I'll show you like a, a bigger app that's built with it. The bigger app is something I made to scratch my own itch, but it's at least as complicated as various apps I've worked on for, uh, for clients for real money, and it's called Inbox Radio. It answers the question, if you could hear your inbox as a radio station, what would it sound like? Now, hopefully you have nice media files in there that sound good. I'm not going to read your text. If you don't have media files, it's not going to sound like much. But uh, it's it's an, an orchestration example because there's going to be a lot of uh, tricky async timing. And now I see why I duct taped over uh, the, the the laser beam portal on this, because like my nervous thumbs have a habit of like turning the laser beam on and then I like gesture your way and like blind people. So good, it caught me. All right. So this is what I feel the state of async in 2019 is. It's like it kind of gets you there. You got some tools you can use. You can like get out over the water. But then where does it really close? Uh, what are some tools you all use? This is going to be like taboo, uh, uh, where the taboo words are callback and promise. OK, so you cannot say callback or promise. What are some ways you all do async. There's a lot of answers to this that aren't callback and promise, but anybody, throw one out, huh? Async await. Async await, OK, await is not uh, either one of those taboo things. Any, anything else? Who else uses async await? Raise your hand and say you use async. OK, so a lot of you use async await. So that's pretty common. Uh, and is there another one? Anyone use generators? XHR, A, uh, AJAX requests are async, yeah. Um, and uh, anyone generators? That's another kind of thing, a little bit. There's a thing called Redux Saga, if you use that. Well, there's a lot of tools, but I don't think they really close the gap. Uh, but I do find that, you know, that whole joke about, oh, here's one tool to rule them all. Now you have, like, even more tools. But I think observables are, fill a void, actually. But, like, what's your name, sir? Dan, like Dan said, he's, he's done a little work with observables. And they, they have a way of like throwing you off of them when you try to learn them. Because their documentation contains stuff like this. And who wants to read stuff like, an observable emits the results of applying the projection function to each item emitted by the source observable and taking values from each projected inner observable sequentially. No thank you. No thank you. If that's your async solution, I don't want it. So, but I've been writing a wrapper library around it to kind of handle some of the grunt work. So it doesn't have to be this difficult. Here's observables in a nutshell. All right, you write an event handler. You get an event, and you have that event now, right? Like they didn't call your event handler until you had the event. So you have a value in your hand now. Time equals zero, t equals zero. That's a value. There's another data type, one of the taboo words, a promise which can be either a value later or an error later, right? Not if you're like, yeah, I promises. Uh, I, can, I can work with that. Um, so they can be values or errors, um, and they're in the future. So an observable is just like you can have one or more values now. They actually can be synchronous. But then you can have multiple values, multiple values, because the success or fail state is separate from the values. So you can get zero, one, or more values and still get you know, your success or fail. So you'll see that working with them is almost identical to working with promises. So you shouldn't be afraid. They, they can actually be just about as simple as promises. Uh, you can, for example, here is a stub observable. It is a thing over time. Observables are things over time, notifications over time, data over time, computations over time. And here, 
you have the values three, two, one, blast off, occurring, each one 1,000 milliseconds after the next, and concatenated together. With a promise, you call dot then. With an observable, you call dot subscribe. And uh, you get access to every single one of these. It does three, two, one, blast off. I'm going to pause here for any questions on this slide. All right. So yes, Zeke. Um, Concat is making a timing decision for you, a concurrency decision for you that says, rather than having all four of these run simultaneously so that you get 3, 2, 1, blast off, you get 3, 2, 1, blast off. If they were arrows, they would be concatenated arrows. After returns an observable, concat returns a, a larger observable. Yep, exactly, exactly. So that's a good property to have. Um, but a little more sophisticated is like the way your user interacts with any app you built could be modeled as an observable. Your user is a series of behaviors over time. So you can write like tests that simulate a user by creating a dubbed uh, observable of clicks. OK, makes sense? Um, and because there's next events, those are the data. There's error events and complete events, the three different color marbles that you saw. You can have three callbacks. All right, so promises take two, observables take three. Small price to pay for the flexibility, I think. Any questions about this one? Again, it's concat and after. So I'll, I'll say something about where those come from in a minute, I think, the next slide. OK. So imagine you have one of these old school callback taking functions. When I say callback, I want you all to think or say aloud, boo. You got a callback taking function that does this. Well, have you seen this pattern of promise wrapping? All right, well, let me break it down just, just so you see it. So you want a function that has users, but the users only come back in the future. So rather than have this function take a callback and spread that callback nastiness to the rest of your application, you're just going to say, I'm going to return a new promise for whatever is going to come back from get users. To the constructor, you're given a, a function resolve so that when you get that result, you can call resolve with that result. And now you're returning a promise for the result. Um, this is what good promise code looks like, arguably. And uh, good observable code is very, very similar. Watch this. See that? So with observable, you get an object that has next, complete, and error. We're only showing next in this case and you just call next result, right? If you use promises, you can, you can use observables. Um, but since observables can return multiple values, you can do one better than returning an array of users. You can return each user individually. Why would you do that? Well, um, we like to pretend like an AJAX request comes in all at once, but it doesn't. It, if there's 100 users you're getting, and the server is churning those users out, maybe the first 20 come in, and then the next 20, something like that. And then maybe something terrible happens, and you don't get the final curly brace of the JSON response. Well, if you had a promise for an array of users, you got an error. No users. But if you got an observable of individual users, you got 20, 40, 80 users, whatever. So this actually can be useful for uh, writing more robust code. Any questions there? Wonderful. So this is how you can write an observable returning function. Uh, in real life, this is uh, Sonos. Sonos. But any playlist-oriented app has a kind of problem that uh, you can solve with observables. So I'm playing a song. Throw out a song you all have been listening to in the last week. Any song. All My Loving. 
All My Loving by the Beatles. And uh, give, me, give me another song that's going to that's gonna come up. No, because we need two to show what's going to happen. That, that's a fine song. I'm not, I'm not knocking your song choice. Fire by Katy Perry? Firework by Katy Perry. Okay. I know both of those songs, but I'm not going to sing them. <laughs> so you're playing All My Lovin' by the Beatles, and then your coworker says, hey, check out Firework by Katy Perry. And you go and click on it. What is your expectation? Does it interrupt the current one and switch over to the new one? Does it play at the same time as the new one? Does it add it to a queue? There's like a standard set of options. Um, that uh, if you think of each song as an observable, then this, what this menu is doing is allow you to choose how to combine observables. So concat was one option. You can you know, play the song when the first one's done finish, you know, finishing. Uh, or you can you know, play now, for example. So real life concurrency problems can be solved by observables. This is one of them. And then I think I'm going into my first demo here. Yes. Uh, I uh, just went to the uh, Field Museum uh, with the new Sue the Dinosaur exhibit, so I'm all like T-Rexified right now. And uh, so I thought I'd take the traditional, uh, this workplace has gone so many days without an accident example, and just like adapt it a little bit to like, what if your accidents were T-Rexes eating your employees? That will just make it a little more interesting. So. The days without accident example. So this is going to show you how I think about uh, seeing observables in places where you might not have seen them before. So here is, let's say this is some log file output, right? And uh, it says that uh, you've gone 270 days without an accident on the first of the year, and then 271, and oops, an accident occurs. So now, your next report, you see these reports go on uh, just literally sequentially, but they start over, right? So can you see two streams of things happening kind of at the same time here? A stream of daily reports, daily reports just kind of goes every day but, re but resets, and a stream of? Yes. This is awesome. So, we could write an application with this log output if we could make these streams work together, right? So to help make working with streams slash observables, I'll use those interchangeably. Uh, they're roughly equivalent. To help make them easier, I wrote a library called Rx Helper. And Rx Helper uh, has a wiki where, uh, I've, I've written up like examples of like, you might use it in this way. So Inbox Radio it deals with audio files. But maybe you're more interested in uh, a case study of days without accident. Or if you play a game that recognizes a cheat code, like only if you hit like AAA, BBA, like in a sequence, will it do something? I've got a wiki entry for that using observables and various other wiki entries. So this is a wiki entry in Rx Helper um, uh, uh, site. And I also have an interactive uh, version of this that we can play with in RunKit, OK? So in RunKit, let me just show you. This is like kind of like Code Sandbox, or if you've used one of those things. It just lets you live edit your code. And uh, down here, you see the actual output. Let me see, uh, first zoom the font of my browser. And yeah, this one's been a little bit more adorned. Uh, so yeah, so here you can see a simplified version of what you just saw. Daily report, zero. Oops, T-Rex came, ate six of your coworkers. Uh, days without an accident is back down to zero or one. So I'm going to dissect this, right? OK. Number one, at the very top, there are some imports. RxJS, RxJS compatibility layer. Those are what are needed to create the observables. So my library helps you work with them very effectively, but you need to create them somehow, so you need this library. Then you import RxHelper, and that gives you something called an agent. And I, 
I like to think of an agent as uh, something or someone who can do things on your behalf. So what the agent will do, first you'll set up the agent. You'll say, here's how uh, you are to behave. When you are told to start, we're going to create an interval. This comes from the RxJ package, the interval. Um, it's a little bit like set interval, but it's an observable, but it's an interval. So um, every 1,000 seconds, with uh, the delay occurring so that it occurs in the middle of the second. We're not going to use real days. Um, with a probability of one out of four, then we'll create a random number of casualties. And we only need three accidents to prove our point. So this says, again, like the condition. This is like an event handler. But it's an event handler that returns an observable. When I'm told to start, I will return an observable of casualty accidents. And these are event handlers that cause more events to happen. So these will become events of type accident. I'm going to take away this filter part for a second, literally comment it out. And then say, also, on a start or an accident, we're going to start counting up by seconds, just keeping track of our count as we go. The interval. Uh, observable gives us 0, 1, 2, 3 over time. And so we'll just turn them into actions of type daily report. And uh, again, I'm going to comment something out uh, um, here and, and show you how the code evolves. So we set up event handlers. These event handlers trigger additional events. and we won't fire any event handler unless we process, unless we tell the agent, our little helper object, process an action of type start, which will then cause that event handler to run. So then there's just a little utility function to format. And so if I run this, what I've commented out is the filter. So I'm going to have to explain filters, because there's no output here. So rest assured, we did process an action of type start. And these observables are churning out accidents in daily reports. Wouldn't we like to see them? Do you ever find yourself opening up an existing function to put a console log inside of it? I do that all the time. But with filters, you don't need to. You can just say, it is a filter. So in other words, run actions through that meet this criteria. This is a function that always returns true. So for every action, figure out its type and payload, and format and log it. So I've just enabled a filter, and now each action becomes visible in, in the console log output. Okay. Um, started at 0. Uh, we can go on to the next page. Here you see uh, you're counting. Now, who can tell me funny about these daily report counts? They're asynchronous, right? All that crazy async junk is happening. And we don't want it to, right? So I'll tell you what, what's actually happening is upon an accident happening, you're getting a new timer started. But you're not killing the old one. So you're seeing a 1 and a 0, a 2 and a 1, a 3 and a 2, and a 4 and a 3. Uh, and this little operator here, concurrency cutoff, means if you were counting, stop and start over. So if I run this one, now you'll see 0, casualty 6, 0, 1, and you've, you've cut off the old timer when you've gone. This is a, probably a different way of writing programs than you're used to, uh, or apps, as they, as they call them. Any Questions, any changes you'd like me to make this on the fly? Like, hey, Dean, what if you did x? What would it do? I'm happy to, to play with this simple example, which we're a little more control than the later example. Yes?
Yeah, let's see. So uh, yeah, uh, well, so for example, so the interval runs every second, and it provides you sequential numbers. And delay doesn't affect what it provides you. It just affects when you get it. And then filter, it's like filtering an array, but you're filtering an observable. So you're actually going to drop one in four events. Um, and that's also not going to affect the fact that here, the second, it's going to come from the interval. So how about we just say the number of uh, casualties is you know, the second that you're on. OK. Then we'll run this. That makes sense, that you had zero casualties on the, on the first day. And I think because of skipping, yeah, they're like, there is no, there is no seven. That's strange that there's no seven. I actually haven't tried this before, so I didn't know what to expect. Was it what you expected or something radically different? Uh, I commented out the randomness of it, though. It's still, it's still just a second. The filter will be dropping random events so that you don't get an accident every second. Uh, was skipped. Well, your daily reports are triggered by this observable, which doesn't skip. So I was surprised that the daily reports skipped. I was OK if accidents skipped, but I was surprised that the daily reports skipped. And it, it might be this delay by half a second might be kind of throwing me off. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very compact way of writing code. So it's sometimes surprising how small changes uh, can result in very different behaviors. But that looks like it makes sense to me right there. I don't see anything wrong with that casualty count. So I think, I think this is about doing the right thing once I got rid of the, uh, once I got rid of the delay. I think the delay was kind of messing with things. So streams and restarting streams. Um, question? Yeah, JavaScript is horrible with floating point numbers. Um, yeah, so yeah, this is, uh, again, I just want to, I don't expect you to be able to like leave here and be able to write apps like this immediately. Uh, I do think it'll be easier uh, using this agent library than just starting from the RxJS docs. I do think it will be easier, so you could give it a shot. And that's why I put a whole bunch of stuff in the wiki, you know, to, to have different scenarios. So I've, I've done a, quite a number of applications like this. And so for me, I know that my uh, uh, spare time coding projects, I'm going to be using this style exclusively because of some benefits that I'll show you in the next example. Uh, yes? Go back to the, the run kit? Uh, not the slide, the, uh, the run kit, right? Yes, yes. Cutoff says, um, in response to a start or an accident, start counting upwards, but cancel the previous one. So what, what this little snippet here is responsible for is a single stream of daily reports. And each time a start or an accident comes in, a new observable is offered up. Uh, 
and each new observable starts counting from zero. By this definition, intervals start from zero, and you're just putting it in a count field and taking no more than 10 of them. That's just a limit. Um, so in response to an event, you return an observable, but if there was already one running, I have a slide where I show you the four different concurrency options. If there was already one run running, kill it and replace it, right? It's a, there's, there's different options, and I'll show you those. Uh, we'll get to another one in the, uh, in the inbox radio example. So that's just kind of like a primer. Oh, here's the slide, <laughs> the four concurrency modes. So if your event handler returns an observable, in other words, a thing that takes some time, and things start, events, those stars on top, start coming in so fast that your previous one didn't finish. It can be super, super handy to just be able to drop one of these four strings into that part of the code and get a different behavior. So the options are parallel, whatever, just start a new days without accident counter or start playing a new song and just don't stop the old one. Just as soon as I'm told to play, I play. Or serial, I'm told to play, but I'm considerate. I'm going to get in a queue and wait for the other one to finish. Or the cutoff mode that you saw, if, if I'm told to play and I'm already playing, well, this new command is more important than the old one, so kill the old one. Or mute, which says, if I'm already playing and somebody tells me to play something else, well, I'm already busy playing, so never mind that. I think of this as the mute example is the, uh, uh, you've already called the elevator and someone stands there pressing the button again. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter, it's coming, okay? So we're, we're, we're able to switch between concurrency modes. Um, what part of this is Rx helper versus RxJS? Like I said, RxJS creates the observables, the agent, the on, the filter, the process, the subscribe, those. Bluebird promises? Yeah. Okay. Bluebird's map say for Ah. Yes. This this doesn't currently have as an option. No. Uh, it's it's either one or zero. But yeah, that's a good observation. Um, that that there are there are additional ways you might want to combine these things beyond these four. Um, yeah, so the way of combining things that I showed you, that is present in RxJS. It's just terribly ugly and hard to remember. Take my word for it. The, the handlers are called concat map, switch map, exhaust map, and flat map. And I don't like those at all. Parallel and serial, parallel and serial. I get that, right? So I made a DSL for synchrony. All right, so we get into inbox radio. I'm going to do some live demos. So this, this, this is famous for failing, um, but that makes it fun. So um, scenario is, what does your inbox sound like now? I'm an amateur musician, and so I have files in my inbox uh, from you know, someone saying, hey, you want to learn this song? You know, I was working on this last night, and that kind of stuff. Also, uh, my buddy here is getting, uh, going on a honeymoon, so you're recently married, or you're about, no, wedding's this Saturday. You're about to get married this Saturday. So like sending wedding tunes back and forth, to deciding on your playlist, very important stuff, right? So anytime you have audio files in your inbox, this could be for you. I originally made it as a run in the browser JavaScript app. It OAuths to the Gmail API, and then it plays files. And I had originally made it as a JavaScript uh, in the browser app. And I'm like, but this is Chicago Node. so. Let's, uh, let's make a console app just for you all. And in fact, it renders in the console with React. Let me start this over, because I, I need to like, get the timing right. OK. So let's say I'm searching my inbox. My friend Greg is someone I collaborate with on music, and he sent me some files. So I'm searching my inbox for Greg. Uh, well, he sent me a couple of messages uh, that have attachments. The first one had none, but the second one had a bunch. So now the system is aware of three attachments, and it puts them in a queue and starts downloading those attachments one at a time. 
and uh, just imagine that there's audio playing of these jams. So this is the event log, kind of like what you saw in the run kit. And it shows kind of like, what is inbox radio thinking? And also, how many darn hoops do I have to jump through to get an attachment from the Gmail API? It turns out it's a handful. Um, you got to you know, get the search tells you which message is matched. But then you got to find out their body so you can get their attachments. And all of this stuff is async, right? So you need a lot of async coordination. Um, and so that's what, that's what this application is going to do. And of course, it's going to play them. So you can think of it as this ginormous state machine driven by async. And it looks like this. Um, and it, it sequentially, a user provides search data. You go out to Google, say, what are the headers of messages that might match the search? Comes back with message bodies. Message bodies, you can ask for their attachment IDs. Each one of those goes into the queue. You can start downloading the attachment. Once it finishes, you can start downloading the next attachment and play that one that you downloaded. And then once you're done playing, that's complete. You can go back to play the next one. Now, I'm not usually writing documentation like this, but if you saw that structure of the agent, you know, agent on this event, emit this event, this actually was kind of auto-generated for me. I had to tweak the layout. But uh, it's, it's kind of nice that uh, this is kind of derived from the source code of the program. And when you see the source code, take a look at how it corresponds to this. And think about how, how, how did, what was the documentation generated from the, the source code. All right. Well, I skipped this step. Here's the code. Before I wrap up, let's do the real code. All right. So now I'm going to have to get some window management stuff. And they put that in this third. And are you? Should I go light theme or dark theme for the, uh, for the uh, editor and stuff? I think I'll go light theme. Yeah. It's like I know the answer, but I'm embarrassed that I didn't do it before coming here. OK, that's that. And actually, I actually have the terminal set up here. Bigger fonts. Boom, CD, source, inbox, radio. And OK. All right. So let's just run this. Um, I do have Wi-Fi, and I have OAuth this to my Google before. But this here is just going to be the demo where um, I search for Greg. And that animation, or the movie you saw in the slide, is going to be just generated live by the program. So, so here, we're seeing um, the search for messages. And then um, the attachments coming in and getting added to the queue. Whoa, what on earth? Did I mention that this is rendering in the console with React? Yeah, it's very cool. Um, a package called Ink. OK, so it's running, and it's showing a simulation of downloading a handful of jams. This was not happening before, for sure. I might have to use iTerm and go dark. Demo equals 1, node, inbox, radio, break. Yeah, there's like, I'm sure it's just the terminal. All right, that's kind of supplemental. The code will take the, 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 the primacy, basically. but. It's nice to have that over there. OK, so there is an orchestrator. And here is the orchestrator. I'm going to get the font good. Uh, the orchestrator, OK, when I was developing this, I had this crazy idea. I had this crazy idea that observables, by representing events over time, are actually a really good way of encapsulating things you don't know about. So I like to tinker with stuff in my spare time. But like when I wanted to tinker on this, the first night I had the idea to work on it, I found myself pouring through Google API documentation and just 
hurting my brain. And I re what I really wanted was like what this demo is, which doesn't talk to Google. I wanted to play with the pieces individually and see how they work together with just simulated data. And then I had this idea, well, if I can return an observable from Google's actual data, I can return a fake observable of my own data. And so that's what this demo mode is doing. So aside from doing some requires and some obligatory stuff in the beginning of the file, we notice that if I get this environment variable, I pull my implementation from a stubs file versus the real file. The stubs file looks like a bunch of concats of a bunch of afters, like you just saw. And it is exactly what is responsible for this output in the other window over here. So I'm just going to run that output while you appreciate the, uh, the, the effort that I put into making this, this timing demo. Uh, the timing is exactly you know, the number of milliseconds specified here. Um, and so that is like the stub implementation. And it is the orchestrator that pulls in either the stub or the real. And these messages get the message, mes matching message headers from the search, the audio attachments. They do the downloading and playing. And uh, they, they come in from uh, one of the two files. The view layer, it's pretty easy to conceptualize. It's in this file here. And it has a big React thing that is a model of our view. And it's just neat that it renders in the console, but it's React with Flexbox, if you believe it, running in the console. Let's just fold that up. This isn't the React meetup. But there's a view object that can be told to render itself to the console. There's a props object that has the name of the song now playing, the array of items in the queue, and then the array of log messages. Right? So that's the, the props, the properties of the view. And then there's this function, update view, that just basically says, hey, that view component, just give it the, whatever the current props are. And we don't need to see more things in the queue than that. And then tell the orchestrator, here's what I can do for you. I can render a view. You call update view, I'll render it. You change my props, I'm giving you props. If you change them, then the next time you call update view, I'll display with the new props. And so that is what's going on in the orchestrator. So there are filters. Filters uh, specify what events they run for. This one says, on every event, push the action into the log. I want to see everything in the log. Question? RxJS has tap. Yep. This one has filter. Because in music, there is a thing called a filter. And I was like, like in the zone. Yeah, exactly. For no other reason. Cool. <laughs> so all these filters uh, run. Also, filters are for like tiny synchronous things. It's just like tap. They're, like, they're just like tap. So now you see a bunch of filters that when I'm told to play a song or track, I'm going to put its title in the title. This is kind of stuff you might use Redux for, but this is not the React meetup. So we're just like changing the properties. And then after we change the properties on every action, because every action might change the properties, so on every action, update the view. So those are your filters. Those filters, they don't make new actions come forth in the future. They just do a thing now, and they're done. Then there are your on segments, where you specify what I, I call these the handlers. You have filters and handlers. The handlers, they call a function that returns an observable, either the stub observable or the real observable. And they cause new actions to be emitted with type specified here. So what I'll do now is kind of drill into uh, one of these, uh, get matching headers uh, from search from the real one, and I'll open it up side by side. And I promise you we're getting to Q&A and being done pretty soon. Okay, so Inbox Radio, uh, 
you have a thing that says, uh, get, mass, get matching message headers from search. You call this function, the orchestrator calls this function, the agent says, anytime someone searches, call that function, and each thing that comes back from it becomes a Google message header. You're seeing those there. So uh, what that means for, uh, for the real implementation here, you go to get ma matching message headers from search, right? And it returns a new observable. Well, what does it have to work with? It has a function list messages that goes to the Google API. This implementation's not that important. But um, the user search action that triggered this, user search triggers get matching message headers from search. And so we get its action as an argument. And its action has this uh, payload that has the queue parameter that has the search term. And so we just pass this to a promise returning function. And then when it gives us all the messages, we just emit from the observable, you know, this is, here's a new matching message header. Okay? And that's what causes these message headers to occur. So let's just do something fun. If I comment out this uh, block here, and save it and run it again. You'll see, what do you expect to see here? It's done. You searched, but no further things happened. So that, that kind of petered out there. Uh, give me a search term. We're actually going to go uh, live to my inbox in just a second instead of doing the demo. Uh, and I want to search for some real stuff. So the actual tracks from Greg. Uh, oh, it's in demo mode. Hold on a second. Now you'll see some actual stuff from Greg, but it's not going to play because I commented out one of the links in the chain. All right, but let's, let's see what uh, Greg has sent me. Well, he sent me a bunch of messages, but I don't know what they are, so let's, let's comment this back in and do this again. All right. Those are some songs. I'm going to hit Control C right now. Uh, so those are some songs Greg has sent me uh, in the inbox. Give me a search term uh, to, to live search my inbox on. Uh, seriously, any any music sounding term or beats. All right. There are some messages. Oh. Oh, good. A live error. Yay! Do it live. All right, uh, I'm going to retreat to my searches that actually worked. So here's a like, heartwarming story that my, my father-in-law wrote the processional theme for our wedding. And it's one of the uh, treasures I have in my inbox. And I know this works. And now it's actually playing audio. From, from my inbox, pizzicato strings. Then the solo violin comes in. Jeez, this is the, the processional of the wedding. So you can see why I kind of like to time travel in my inbox from time to time. There's, there's some good stuff in there. It's all about orchestrating async. So that's a lot of fun. Um, let's see, another term that, that I thought worked, uh, fire worked. Nope, it doesn't. Uh, it does uh, time out my uh, authentication token from time to time, and so that's okay. So let me just kind of finish breezing through the anatomy of this program, and then I'll, I'll let you guys go. Um, so filters take care of updating what's to be displayed in the view and then telling the view to update itself. Handlers make these Google API calls. Downloading the attachment. Here you see the use of another concurrency mode called serial. I don't want to download three files at once. I want to download one file in its entirety, then that start downloading other files. So I was able to, uh, to 
um, do that just by adding uh, serial there. If I go back to the demo mode, which won't fail on me, and I comment out serial, you'll see uh, I has several. But instead of seeing attachment start and start, start be like three starts, I think, as soon as these attachments come in. Start, start, start. You see? So serial, being able to toggle without changing the structure of the station, really, the structure of it is still, it's, it's the state machine. That's the structure of the program. But when I come to a timing issue, the first thing I try to throw at it is, you know, can I, can I fix the timing by uh, merely in the concurrency mode? Or is it a Zeke-style case that I just can't address with toggling one of these flags? I was actually thinking of, of saying parallel with a limit of four in parentheses. Like, that might be an extension to this in the future based on what you said. Um, and uh, yeah, so so you know it's it's this it's like setting up a chain of dominoes. You attach filters and you attach handlers, and then you say start, and then it feeds on itself in the future. Start is down here. Simply gather the uh, argument, pass to it on the command line, put it in a string, and hand it. You know, create one of these user search actions and then update the view right away. It's probably irrelevant. So yeah, that's, that's inbox uh, radio. I'd love to show you uh, more, but I'm, I'm, I'm running out of time uh, to talk at you, and I want to open it up for Q&A. But first, I'll just, you know, what are the takeaways? What do I want you to, to come away remembering? Observables are like the T-Rex of data types. You can encapsulate behavior behind them, so you can stub out the unknowns that you don't know yet. You can just simulate it with observables. Also, they're way more flexible than promises. They're zero to infinite values, taking zero to infinite time. They can be sync or async, so they can waste as little time as possible. And the most important thing to remember about async is this. Async cat. Oh. Okay, so here's where, you <laughs> here's where you can find the Rx Helper library and some information on how to use it, particularly the wiki of examples. Uh, some of the things that I have tried doing with this that work, that you can read about in the wiki. If any of those topics are interesting to you, check out the wiki. Observables themselves come from the RxJS library, which is here. Um, a lot of respect for for those who created that. And uh, the source code for Inbox Radio is over here in my account. Um, I'm Dean Radcliffe, working at G2. And let me know if you want to talk about any of this stuff after the talk. Thank you. <laughs>